Oh yeah. So, I'm making this video and I don't intend to make these videos every time I move out of an apartment. I just think that for my first apartment, not, not even because it's my first apartment, apartment that I'm documenting this, but because this place has been a little, a little fucked up. Um, I have, I have a lot of friends who, well, no, I have, I have some friends who avoid coming here. Now, not that I actually think that this is a place that, uh, warrants actually avoiding this place, but I can understand. I can understand why some people are hesitant to step foot here. <laughs> um... So I'm just going to start talking about the things that have happened in this apartment while I've lived here. It has almost been an entire year since I lived here. Uh, I'm moving out soon. Uh, so I moved here uh, August 15th of last year. It is now August 5th of this year. Um, so what's happened? I wrote a list. As you can see, I'm illiterate. So you can't read my writing, but I'm going to read it to you. So... I'm just, I'm just kind. I'm just so kind that I am filming a video rather than writing something and handing it to you. So thank me for this. Um, so I'm just sort of gonna go in like half chronological order of the shit things I noticed about this. Um, when I went to go view this apartment before getting it, uh, Tent City existed here, which is, uh, just a huge mass of homeless encampments that were here at the time. Um, which actually doesn't bother me, so I, I did not care. However, this is sort of... Illustrates kind of the area this is in. Not not really, actually. You can have like a tent city in a not too rough area. Now, some of you might be saying, no, that's gotta be pretty rough. No, it's rougher than that. It's, it's worse. It's worse out here. Um, I live in a really bad area. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Holy shit. One second. The walls are coming down on me. Anyways. I live in a really bad area. And um, there's lots of homeless people here. It's really dirty. Uh, the homeless people actually, like that's actually not like a problem besides like, the open drug use, so there's needles everywhere and broken meth pipes, um, and garbage, like, um, there's a lot of gang activity in the area, that's actually the, like, dangerous people aspect, there's lots of gang activity in the area, uh, it's really gross, and I, I live in, like, one of the worst places to live here, so I live in a shit area, uh, why is this happening? I fixed my horrible green screen setup. Now I'm back. So I live in a shitty area. This was this was obvious from when I first moved in, but also like within the first few weeks, you know, I started noticing it more. You know, the ambiance of this area. My window's closed right now. Uh, it's it's actually been a little better this year so far. The noises, but it's still you know loud. Uh, Police sirens frequently, ambulance sirens fre frequently, people screaming outside, you know, they're violently beating each other up. Lots of that. Lots of people in the parking lot of this building having their disputes physically. And, and I'll, get, I'll get to more on that, because there is something there. During the fall and winter, there was constantly an overdose van. There's a, so there's, in this area, there are like, specific ambulances for overdoses uh they're like they're shaped like ambulances uh they're kind of painted differently uh but they have a different siren they have a different siren for the overdose van so there would be like every like i'm being very generous every half hour but it's probably more like every 15 minutes there would be a siren like the overdose van <laughs> is coming to get someone you know uh so that's the sort of ambiance of the area and I understand how some people may be bothered here. Uh, this is an area where, you know, lots of people would say, absolutely, you cannot walk at night here. This is not a great place. Uh, there were constant gunshots. There's still some gunshots sometimes, but 
gunshots. Uh, I saw a guy once. I saw. I heard the gunshot. And I saw the guy with the gun. And I was like, oh. <laughs> it was a little. It was a little. It's a little unfortunate when you're inside a building and you hear the gunshots. It's not that bad. But when you're outside, and it's like near you, you're like, oh fuck. <laughs> so there are a lot of gunshots uh, that would happen. Uh, someone had like a this weird modified gun. It would like make an echoey sort of gunshot. Anyways, uh, I don't mind this area though. I completely understand that it's not for everyone. Uh, and this is why it makes me sad, really, because this place is kind of a ghetto, like a definition of a ghetto. Um, it's a lot of, like, African immigrant families uh, and, like, uh, Arab immigrant families who live in lots of the apartments in this area. And this area, which is, like, concentrated with uh, extreme poverty and disgusting surroundings and a few homeless shelters and gang violence everywhere these are the areas which will rent to these immigrant families which makes me really sad <laughs> makes me really sad because uh my apartment building that i'm currently in uh there's about probably at least 10 kids under 10 years old in here and it's it's much like that for all the other apartments down my street and all the other streets so it makes me really sad that all these really young children are growing up in these surroundings, you know, like I, like I described. And I haven't even, even described some other things. I'm about to describe some other alarming things about this area and what I've witnessed here. And also my building might also illustrate some not great living conditions for young children who also live in this building. Um, but it makes me sad. Uh, I'm not bothered by any of the surroundings. Like, I'm not like, you know, like some people see homeless people and they're like, oh, this is disgusting. They get mad at the homeless people. No, I'm just really sad that there's like horrible things happening here and people have to live here. Um, so on to some fucked up things. Uh, within the second month or third month of living here, uh, October, I saw two bodies on the property of this building. <laughs> not, not counting probably other bodies in the area. Just in the property of this building, in the parking lot. Um, the first one, you know, I was falling asleep one night and I heard the usual people beating crap out of each other in my parking lot. So I, I fell asleep thinking nothing um, of this. And this was around like 3am, so I was falling back asleep. Um, and then I get a call from my mom, like, a few hours later, and she's like, what's going on? Like, your apartment, there's, like, a helicopter over it, like, on the news? So they beat each other to death. So, yes, there, there was murder that I was witnessing literally outside my bedroom window. Um, now that actually doesn't bother me, <laughs> but it is... I was like, <laughs> it's a little, when you tell someone this, it's a little, it warrants a reaction of sorts, which, which makes sense. Yes. Like I think that human death should warrant a reaction. Yeah. But also the really fucked up thing, side notes, you know, like all these, like all these deaths and murders happen in the cities, but you never hear them reported on, on the news. Like the news never, like the helicopter went over because they saw like all the cops and like all the tape going out, like in the news, the news helicopter, but they never were like told by the cops what the situation was. So it was never reported on. And lots of these things happen, I assume. So it just really sucks that some people just die and it's never, no one cares. They're like shoved under the rug. It's really gross, actually. Really dehumanizing and disgusting. So yeah, I heard some people get beat to death. Um, don't know which one because I've went to sleep because there was two of them. Um, but yeah, one of them did not survive and they didn't have any weapons, it didn't sound like. So someone literally just got beat to death um, and my parking lot was closed for a few days. Uh, and then on like the edge of the building in the parking lot, uh, probably like a few weeks later, there was some guy overdosing. Um, there were sort of paramedics helping him, but wasn't looking too good, so that guy did not make it either. So, not only is this a shit area, but the kids in this building also live in a building that, uh, 
you know, the murders occur. Another thing that happened in this apartment, I'm, I'm going chronologically of things that happened. This video is probably going to be way too fucking long. But anyways, uh, the water, the tap water is, it comes out white like milk. And it has been doing this the entire time. It's because there's too much calcium chloride in it. Um, and that's just how it is. I don't even, I'll, I'll insert an image somewhere. Is that an image? Is that an image? That was literally two days ago. Um, and it's been like that. I've had some people call my water the McDonald's Sprite machine because sometimes it looks like it's coming out like white, clear, white, clear when it's running out. Not all the time. It, it varies. The color of my water varies. Uh, it's not like uh, contaminated or anything, but it is a lot of chloride. So. Then something else started occurring in October called cockroaches. Now, I didn't know there were any cockroaches in this area of the world in which I live at all. I had never heard of anyone seeing them up until like two weeks ago, uh, two weeks before this happened. My friend was like, oh, like my place of work has cockroaches. And I was like, cockroaches? Like, Are you sure they're cockroaches? What do you mean there's... What do you mean there's, cock there's cockroaches here? What are you talking about? And then two weeks later, I see one climbing up my fridge and I was like, that is definitely a cockroach. That is definitely a cockroach. Now I've heard all those things about cockroaches. You know, you see one, it's too late. There's already gonna be thousands of them. So that was true. And there are a lot of cockroaches and the infestation is back as we speak. So I have an audience right now in these little floorboards, they're enjoying me yelling right now they're probably like i can't wait till he goes to sleep so we can run around in the bathroom um cockroach cockroaches baby cockroaches fly around um i'm sure all co all cockroaches fly around but i mean the baby like the ones like this size fly around everywhere so at some point it looked like fruit flies at the worst of it i was killing like five a day um So I would call uh, the apartment building maintenance and they would come and put some pest stuff down, which never worked. Eventually they disappeared for a while, like starting like January. That was the last I had seen one for a while. And then two or three weeks ago, I saw another one because the heat wave hit. So all the cockroaches really want to be inside because it's hot and nice. We'll get on to the heat wave later in my ramblings um so cockroaches are not nice to live with i don't like infestation i don't i just don't like infestation um fortunately it was never like you know like you have a crazy cockroach i mean the thing is the infestation is in the walls so i can't see like the crazy amount of cockroaches that are here because they go underneath the floorboards and live there ignorance is bliss basically maintenance problems that i don't mind is the next thing i have written here which i'm gonna go through every single time that minor maintenance things have to be called the bathroom sink it was just like fucked up for a bit and leaking and eventually i got it fixed like it took like three tries like they would come fix it and it would like break again blah, blah, blah. so they were they replaced it a few times and it was fine Actually, I have no problem with like minor maintenance problems like this and having to call maintenance. I'm like, yeah, like it's an old shit building. I understand. Ceiling. The ceiling exploded. I was watching the final episode of Attack on Titan when it came out and I hear just rushing water coming from the, the bathroom. I assume that the shower head was just running water because sometimes, you know, water pressure with water pressure that happens, like it'll just start pouring more and stops for a bit. But I'm like, no, that's that's pouring a lot of water. So I go over to the check. And there's a giant hole in the ceiling and it's just falling down. Uh, if I could find a picture, I'll put it here. Uh, so you might have noticed that it looks a lot like Silent Hill The Room is occurring. And you're right. The Silent, Silent Hill The Room, it was just written about me. Everything that happens in that game happens to me. But that that's a tangent for another day. So what had happened, uh, and this was on a Sunday. So the Sunday maintenance man had to come, and, you know, like the like casual maintenance man. So he was kind of upset. Uh, the bathtub upstairs in my suite. Thank God what came out because it was like it was like brownish water coming out. It was not sewage. It was like bath water. So it was a little, it was like moldy water. Um, what had happened is the bathtub upstairs was installed wrong. So the water was just like 
seeping down into like the insulation like wall area floor area between the seats suites and eventually there was too much water collected and it bursts and the hole happens so awesome that was awesome so i ran out of phone storage and i had to re restart the recording and i have to redo some parts that i did yes so let's restart this um I was just talking about the ceiling exploding. Now I'm gonna talk about the boilers. So the boilers would stop working. I was next to the boiler room. I would be out of warm water at first times. And when the boilers would break, they would make this horrible, horrible loud noise that just sounds like everything's gonna explode. So it was not nice. Uh, they had to fix that probably like six times. So I'm witnessing things on my floor. Um, so that was fun. The dryer in the laundry room does not work. It does not dry my clothes. To fully dry them, I have to spread all my floors, all my clothes out on the floor. Awesome. So there would be this lady in the fall, winter, sort of, she would break in, write random shit on the walls, and uh, ring my doorbell a lot of times. She would just break in, steal the mail, or whatever. Uh, speaking of breaking in, around April or May, and I live next to the laundry room, around April or May, it started to smell like cat piss in the hallway. So my stupid ass, who lives on Meth Street Meth Ave, I was like, oh, someone must have got a cat. And it must be cat piss. No, obviously it was meth, right? Uh, so what had happened, uh, the apartment smelled like meth and cigarettes for a long while. Because, uh, show my fan on the floor, I'm trying to fix. Uh, so it smelled like meth and cigarettes for a while in the hallway because uh, the window in the laundry room was broken into and they were living in there and smoking meth and cigarettes and making a mess and all sorts of things. Uh, uh, so what they did was they punched, they punched through the glass, reached their arm over to unlock the window and then they would just slide it open and crawl inside and they would slide it back when they, when they wanted to leave and make it seem like nothing had happened somehow. I don't know. I don't know how they thought that would work. Um, so it was like that for like two weeks until they boarded it up. And the window is still boarded up. It still has not been replaced. So the building still has a security threat in that way. Um, I'll show a picture of the board window if I feel, feel less lazy enough to go over a door over and take a picture. So here's the window. Um, it's still boarded up. It's been that way since the May. Awesome. <laughs> um, as you, there's a little can of, or like jug of juice there that's still in the window. They didn't even clean it when they boarded it up. Anyways, um, we're getting to the last, the last point of this. Here's my watch. I'll stop like, guys, I just sent an alarm by accident. So, it's summer now, and we had a few heat waves. And it's, the thing about this apartment is it's unbearably hot. Even in the winter, it's pretty hot. I never had to wear a hoodie or anything inside and I was sleeping naked just fine in the winter with no complaints. Um, what does this translate to when there's a heat wave of plus 35 for weeks? Uh, apartment got 50 Celsius, 50 degrees Celsius. Um, I didn't live here. I would go my friend's place, I would go live back with my mom, I'd go to my girlfriend's place. I would go anywhere but here. And the weather is nice right now that I can be here for the past few days. Um, but otherwise it becomes unlivable. Uh, like kind of unbreathable for more than 15 minutes. Uh, there were a few times where I would just almost pass out 
Like I'd be in here for 15 minutes and I'd be falling over from heat exhaustion. And at that point I would go, oh, maybe it's time I leave my apartment. Cause you know, you don't, you don't really realize when heat exhaustion is happening, happening. So you're just sort of like starting to pass out. So yes. Uh, now you may be hearing all the things in this video and be like, Jesus Christ. Um, it's not that bad, but Jesus Christ. Um, so despite all of this, the crazy thing is that they're raising the rent of this place $350. This place is now going to be worth like $1,200. I will not be renewing the lease. Crazy thing is I was going to renew the lease if the, if the rent increase was not that much. Um, but yeah, uh, I will be moving soon. So I'll be recording from a new location soon. If I do record, maybe I'll never upload to YouTube again. No, um, maybe I'll... Maybe I'll get inspired to make YouTube videos at some points. I would like to. Anyways. Hope you enjoyed me talking about the things wrong with this apartment. Uh, have a nice Monday. And if it's not Monday, where you are, when you are, then have a nice day.